All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. And today I'm joined by Mladen Kresik, who is in Danbury, Connecticut today. How are you doing, Mladen? Uh, very, very good. Uh, thank you, John. Thanks for having me. Excellent. And uh, Mladen, for those who don't know him, is the President Chief Executive of k &R Negotiations, which is a consulting firm specializing in negotiations, as the name suggests. <laughs> and today, what we're going to talk about is the six principles every international negotiator must know, and at the root of it, that negotiation is a continuous process. So let's just start with that before we get into the six uh, principles, Mladen. Why, is, why do you call it a continuous process? Well, that's a, that's a good question, John. Um, there's a number of reasons. But one is that uh, negotiations are pervasive, particularly business to business. People have a preconceived negotiation, uh, a notion of what negotiations are mm -hmm. with a particular company or with, a, with the, uh, the individuals that represent that company, even before they enter the room. Usually it's because they've done business with them before. So there's a background, there's a preconceived notion that's already been set. The other um, uh, area which I think is important for people to understand is that very often when people are in, uh, in interacting with another business, in the sales process, for example, mm -hmm. uh, they don't believe they're negotiating because it's early in the process, they're prospecting, they're having discussions, and in reality, they're setting the stage for everything that's going to happen later on when they are negotiating. Right. So, in fact, most mistakes in negotiations happen very early in the process when people don't think they're negotiating. Mm -hmm. and, and that causes all kinds of problems. And then the third area where this concept of negotiations being a continuous process is important is, uh, is, is, is in selling, making what are the easiest sales and the easiest business deals that we should be able to make, which is to people who we have already sold to. Right. When we're incumbent and having done business with somebody, that sale should be easy. Yet very often it's not. And that's because we don't manage incumbency as an asset. And it's a huge asset because mm -hmm. it creates leverage for the future negotiations. Yeah, well, we uh, we often get a little bit, I guess, lazy around incumbency and because everybody's always chasing after new business and they don't invest enough in in the customers they have. So um, an interesting point, and I agree with you that negotiations need to start at the very beginning of the process and go through. And in fact, if you think about it, as you work your way through a sales or a buying process, you're always actually negotiating to get permission to move to the next stage anyway, aren't you? Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Everything is a give and take. And uh, the way you move to the next stage is actually by gaining some respect. And very mm -hmm. often we don't even realize it, but we lose respect in the process because something that happens, that we, 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 there's a concept we call value leakage. Mm -hmm. Value leakage happens when early on in the process we get excited that we can move forward and we don't ask for anything in return from the client. We say, oh, yeah, we're going to do this. Mm -hmm. We can do this. We can do this. Mm -hmm. Right. So the minute we say we can do this, we actually make what we call an unprincipled concession. Um, and that means that we haven't gotten anything in return. Mm -hmm. We can do this if you come and visit our offices. Right, right. Just that little exchange sets up a level of respect that allows you to move to the next step. Mm -hmm. it, it, it gets the customer or the prospect vested in the negotiation process. Mm -hmm, absolutely. So let's uh, let's talk a little bit about what are the what are the six principles that every international negotiator should know. Yeah, I think it's it's actually every negotiator should know because we well every we, negotiator is international at the end of the day, aren't they? <laughs> right, especially in today's environment. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, the, the the six principles are actually relatively simple, but people didn't need to be reminded occasionally. The only the first one. I would say is above the others. Mm -hmm. And the first one is preparation is key to winning negotiation. Uh, and it starts with a concept we call more, get more. More is actually an acronym, stands for motivations, objectives, requirements, and edge. And 
and and um, motivations and objectives. If you think about it, motivation is why somebody does something. Mm-hmm. Objective is what they're trying to achieve. The requirements deal with the how. How do we get to the objective? Uh, and edge just means if you understand people's motivations, objectives, and requirements, you will get the edge in the negotiation. You will have an advantage. Um, so that is all about preparation. So preparation sits mm-hmm. above the others. The second principle is we talk about protecting our weaknesses and utilizing others in negotiations. And that statement is about leverage. Right. Right. And 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 really, is, it almost sounds nefarious, but it's not, especially when we're dealing in B2B and in sales. Um, protecting our weaknesses means that we have to understand how to deal with those things we're not as strong at mm-hmm. as other people who we might compete for that business yeah. with. Right? Or per- perceived, right? Because um, yes. it may not really be a weakness. It may be a perceived weakness or whatever. And you have to, yeah. You have, to you, have to address, and you have to address it up front because you don't want to be on the defensive. Mm-hmm. Utilizing other people's weaknesses, it sounds nefarious in, in, in because people think about negotiation as a so, sort of a tense process. But if you think about sales negotiations, it, it's all about trying to make your customer better. Mm-hmm. Right? If you do something that makes them better in their competitive environment, in their marketplace, with their customers – you're actually utilizing their weaknesses because you don't need they don't need to address the stuff they're already good at. They need mm. to address the stuff they're not so good at. Right, right. So from that standpoint, it it, it, it really is a statement of how we sell. Mm-hmm. Um, the third principle, and this is true with all companies that have cross-functional elements, people who negotiate in a cross-functional way, right? You, you sometimes have lawyers and all, but most of the time you don't. You might have finance, you might have mm-hmm. marketing, you might have sales and you know, uh, development and so on. When you have a team that works on these complex sales or even simpler sales that need to be done because they're critical to a company, that team can be an asset or it can be a drawback. Right. And more often than not, unfortunately, we see teams that lose a lot of credibility operating in a divided way Mm -hmm. because everybody has different interests. And one of the things we have to align in negotiations is those interests of our own team in order to be able to move forward, like you said, move forward, right? So in 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 order to do that, then, it obviously requires you to... Sit down with your team and and almost uh, make sure everybody understands what their role in this process is, and then everybody else understands what each person needs to get out of it. But as you say, if I'm in if I'm in legal and I'm part of that team, and all I want to do is to get my contract through in with all of my terms and conditions in it, and I don't want to give up on anything. Um, then that may not be aligned with you because the company we're dealing with wants to use their legal document and there's some things that they are are non-starters for them. So uh, you have to set it up so that we're already prepared to kind of give and take a little, right? Absolutely. That, again, goes back to that first principle of preparation. Mm -hmm. And there are really two aspects to teamwork. Um, We talked about something called the macro agenda and the micro Mm -hmm. agenda. The teamwork that takes place over the entire course of a negotiation, you might wind up having a negotiation over two, three, four months, mm-hmm. sometimes long. Um, so managing that entire process and how the team interacts and what are the rules of engagement of different people is, is part of teamwork. Uh, and then on the micro agenda, how do we deal with each interaction with with, with the other side. How, mm-hmm. how do we set up, if, if we're doing it by conference call, what are the rules? God forbid we're in different places, which mm-hmm. happens often, sure. right? Uh, you know, if somebody opens their mouth who's not supposed to open their mouth, it's too late to text them and say, mm-hmm. you shouldn't have said that. Um, so you have to have rules of engagement there and what are people's roles. And in order to get there, you actually have to align the interests of the people at the mm-hmm. table. Like, it's exactly like you said. Yeah. So, uh, when, and that not only means aligning legal and finance and all those people, but you also have to have some agreement on your own team of what you believe are the interests on the other side of the table. Right. Right. And we use something called the prioritization analysis that's called MID, mandatory, important, desirable. 
in which we analyze what is a walk away. What what mm -hmm. is you know where is legal going to stand and say no, or finance going to stand and say no, and do we all agree with that? Because if we don't have an alignment on those things in advance of the meeting with the customer or with the other side, we're going to have a divided team in front of them. Yeah, and I, and I think part of the problem is that, and sometimes in sales are guilty of this, and that is not really treating, say, you know, finance or legal or whatever, not really treating them as members of the sales team, but rather, uh, I got to bring in legal, uh, I got to bring in finance. They're just kind of last minute add ons. And I think what you're saying is you have to treat them like real team members from the get go. I Very well said. You know, they may, you may not have the kind of resources mm -hmm. in your company, whoever you are, that uh, you can bring legal into every discussion mm -hmm. sure. of finance. But you have to have on the important deals especially some notion of how they're going to participate and keep them informed as these things are going on so when they first get involved, they have some idea of the context. Uh, because if people, uh, the tendency is if I don't know for the facts, I'm going to take the most conservative position possible. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to help you fashion the deal if I don't know the facts. So you, you have to keep me up with the facts so I can help you fashion a better deal. Mm -hmm. So what's uh, number four, principle four? Principle four, concessions. Uh, personally, my favorite principle. Uh, concessions easily give an appear of little value. Mm. That is, it, it sounds almost trite, but what that leads to is a concept we call principled concessions, and I think I mentioned it a mm -hmm. little bit. I genuinely believe, and I'm a lawyer by trade, my history, I'm going to give it away, but mm -hmm. um, I, I don't practice law anymore, but I, I, uh, I'm a lawyer by trade. So my, my tendency is to not, not use words like never or always. I genuinely believe we never have to make an unprincipled concession. A concession that's easily given away and somebody thinks they got nothing for it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I'd like us to engage in a principled negotiation, both on my side and on the other sure. side, right? Because I feel better. If I know somebody is only going to take steps that are principled in nature, I will feel better at the end of the process. The customer, when you give them that last minute concession, first they say yes. And then later on, maybe 10 minutes later, maybe five seconds later, they say to themselves, I just won. I just got nothing. And by the way, I got exactly what I asked for, and I'm not happy. Right, right. Yeah. That's an irony. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And maybe you got, and maybe, as you say, you get left with the feeling that, oh, you were just holding that in your back pocket anyway. It wasn't really a good faith negotiation that was good. You were always going to throw that in. Yeah, and and and, the, and the, the other irony that happens is exactly from that aspect. If you're dealing with, you know, if you're going to a bazaar, uh, I've had this happen. We've all had this happen. I've gone to markets in Mexico City mm. and in Turkey and in in China, and you know, you're negotiating over. I I, I had one negotiation over cufflinks, mm -hmm. and. Um, uh, Ego is involved, but you know what? If you overpay a little bit just because the other side says, uh, you know, you, you you offer them 50 for something they are looking for to sell for 200, whatever it is in local currency, and they go, yes, you can have it. For a moment there, you say, eh, I probably overpaid. Mm -hmm. You're not going to open up that negotiation. You'll pay 50 pesos or whatever it is yeah, for yeah. a couple yeah. and you'll be done with it. But you start adding zeros to that equation. And now you're doing a business deal, and because it's the end of quarter, you give that quick concession to the customer. They are going to say, you know what? Hold on for a second. We could get something else. Yes. And exactly. instead of closing the deal quicker, it actually prolongs the process. Yeah, yeah. I, I think we, we've all seen that happen where, uh, I mean, I'm being on the other end as buyers where you go, huh, okay. So maybe if I just play a little bit harder to get now, maybe if I do take this right up to the wire on the last day of the quarter, I can squeeze something more out of you, which is fine. You can do that. But uh, from both sides of the table, it never ends up, as you say, feeling feeling like it's a satisfactory outcome for either party, right? 
Yeah, and that's part. And then you and you really do want both sides walking yes. away feeling good mm-hmm. because now you have a relationship. You want to be able to negotiate the next deal with those same people, and that continuous process comes back, which is the last principle, uh, the next principle, yep. fifth, fifth, fifth principle. Uh, you 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 get to this negotiation being a continuous process. They remember how you behaved the last time. Sure. Right. So the, if they know that you get, you become 15, 20 percent more conciliatory three days before the end of quarter, guess what's going to happen? Yeah. Guess when I'm going to open up the negotiations. I ain't going to negotiate yeah. anything until three days before the end. <laughs> I'm not even going to answer your emails. <laughs> yeah. And, then, uh, you know, that's when people, the, the radio silence, yeah. that makes them really nervous. Right? Exactly. So you, and you think about most salespeople are type A personalities, right? Mm. So they're sitting there going like this. Yeah. And, uh, and exactly. You're yeah. you with emails and you're not answering. Exactly. And you're just waiting, counting down the day. So, yeah, yeah, it's getting close enough to the end of the time. I can open up negotiations now. Um, um, so what's the sixth principle? The sixth principle, terms cost money. Somebody pays the bill. Um, and that gets back to all of the things that get discussed, mm-hmm. uh, including the legal terms. Everything in your contracts, in your agreements, in your term sheets, if you do term sheets, needs to have some meaning. If you don't understand what the meaning is, go to the person who actually had that term crafted and put it, put it in there and ask what the meaning is, because usually it's important and it will impact financing Mm -hmm. in some way. It will impact the outcome of the deal as it's delivered. And very often we hear people say things like, oh, that's just boilerplate. Yeah. Well, let me make sure I understand. It's boilerplate, which means it's in every agreement. So if it's in every agreement, it has no value and no meaning? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Understand, and this also has to do with credibility, because as a salesperson or as somebody who's negotiating deals in business development, for example, if I don't understand what I'm putting in front of the other side, I'm going to have a credibility issue somewhere along the way. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if that term comes up and the the buyer says, oh, actually, I need to invoke whatever term, nine, you know, section, whatever, and you don't understand what that is or what the implication of it, or you never read it in the first place, yeah, it's not going to look great, is it? Yeah, yeah no, it, 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 it damages your credibility and damages your ability to negotiate the next deal in the future, if not, uh, or, or you may not even get that opportunity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So let's go back uh, um, as we're bumping up against time here. Let's go back again just through the six of them. Um, so just we just underline them. Preparation being the first one. And I, and I totally agree with you. I think preparation in everything is good. Preparation in, in negotiations. I would I would probably wager that there isn't a huge amount of preparation done for negotiation by a lot of people. That is a that's an amazingly true statement. Mm-hmm. I've worked on deals that are um, incredibly um, important for particular companies and public entities as well, where uh, people walk in uh, with a team to meet with the other side, and they're introducing each other to each other in the building before five minutes before the meeting. Mm-hmm. How much preparation has taken place there? Exactly. If they, and you know, this is all the principles coming together because that's about teamwork. It's about agenda management, mm-hmm. you know. Um, uh, preparation, all, all these things link to preparation. You, you have to prepare the subject matter. You want to prepare an agenda and how you're going to cover it. Make sure that the right people are present so that you can actually have a meaningful discussion. And like you mentioned, progress things forward, which is the intent of every meeting and every interaction with the other side to progress things forward. You can't do that if you're not prepared. Absolutely. Then you've got to make sure that you are aware and are able to articulate and protect the weaknesses that you have because everybody has, nobody has, nobody ever enters from a position of 100% 100 strength, right? So you need to be aware of those. Um, We just talked again about the team aspect, making sure that the team is coherent. Um, Concessions. That was, I think, that was a big one. You know, don't, um, uh, you know, don't just throw away concessions. Don't just give them out and make sure that they're principled and there's a value attached to them, right? Um, yeah. 
And the continuous process, and I really like that because that underlines everything you say about negotiation being a continuous process. Um, just like providing value should be a continuous process, negotiating should be a continuous process. Right. And um, and then, um, sorry, what was number terms six? Again? Plus money. Somebody yeah, pays terms, the bill. Somebody pays the bill. The terms mean something. So read, read your contracts, <laughs> read your terms and conditions. Understand what they mean, right? Yeah, and, and again, it, it, that's also related to concessions that usually given up here a little value because if you have stuff that's frivolous in an agreement and you just give it away, you just damage your credibility mm -hmm. for putting that term in front of a customer in the first place, plus you wound up with an unprincipled concession, which is damaging uh, uh, to, to the results of the whole negotiation. So, Yeah, and I think that's the one, I mean, the one on terms, because, I mean, how often have you had had that situation where, say, a, you know, a buyer will say, well, well, what's this term? And you go, oh, that, ah, that doesn't really mean anything. We can take that out. <laughs> and, you know, yeah, to your point, like, yeah. okay, well, why was it in then in the first place? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Nobody looks good in that equation. Yeah. Okay. So, um, Latin Kresic, this has been great, uh, a great conversation around negotiations. Before we go, do you want to just tell the viewers a little bit more about yourself, about your company and how they can learn out, learn more about you? Sure. We are reachable at uh, negotiators.com, mm -hmm. N-E-G-O-T-I-A-T-O-R-S.com. That, that's uh, k and Negotiations. We were founded in 1994, uh, and uh, we are a consultancy, and we, we work around all of the sales process with our clients. We also do corporate education on subjects of negotiations. I have a book out that uh, has received some good press called Negotiate Wisely in mm -hmm. Business and Technology. It's av available now in ebook format on Amazon. Uh, and if you have any questions, you can um, email us at info at negotiators.com. Great. Negotiators.com. Pretty simple. Um, and listen, Martin, it's been a fascinating conversation. I, I would encourage everybody to check out the website and, and your book. I think negotiations, I think there's very few people who would say that they have reached a pinnacle of negotiation and have nothing more to learn. I think negotiation is one of those things that's an ongoing process and all of us can always get better at it. Absolutely. It's a competitive endeavor. Like <laughs> athletics, you got to keep practicing, you got to keep working at it and keep getting coaching. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Madden. And thank you for joining us for another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden, uh, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. See you all again soon. Thank you. Thank you, John. So I encourage you to subscribe to salespop.net, the online sales magazine. Also subscribe to our YouTube channel and then comment. Get involved in the conversation. Love to hear what you have to say.